What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and in this video, I want to use Helldivers 2 to try to bring back some old PlayStation franchises. So look, some of these we have talked about before, but with the success of Helldivers, I'm going to try to make the pitch with Helldivers 2 kind of in mind. Now, I don't necessarily want Sony to, like, massively go after trends uh, that goes into the whole live service push, but Helldivers 2 is a massive success. We know how companies act, and again, honestly... If they were to go chasing trends and chasing maybe their own trend with Helldivers 2, right? And they start to bring back these franchises, I got nothing negative to say whatsoever, right? They might not be doing it for necessarily the right reason, but ultimately I do want these back regardless, so it doesn't really matter. And it's kind of jokingly, but also kind of not jokingly. So what I want to do is I want to kind of go in order of the ones that I'm not as passionate about to the one that I am the most passionate about, okay? Now, we'll start with SOCOM. However, SOCOM actually, I think, would be the closest to something like Helldivers 2, and it's mainly because of the cooperative elements slash strategy. Now, SOCOM hasn't had, number one, hasn't had a game in an incredibly long time. The studio that made SOCOMs, you know, was shut down, right? Sony acquired them, and I think back in 2012 or 2013, they shut them down, uh, Zipper Interactive, right? Now, also, I guess you could throw in, SOCOM didn't really have excellent games even before that. The last couple games that were made weren't all that amazing. It was really, you got to go back probably 15 or so years, maybe even longer, before you get to, like, the elite of the SOCOM era, but... It is a solid franchise. There have been rumors, actually, for a long time. I think Colin Moriarty, back in the day, back in the day, meaning a few years ago, had brought up SOCOM as like a possibility. Um, now, nothing has happened so far. And again, the studio is no longer around, so you'd have to find somebody else. But again, if you're just trying to like say, okay, well, because of Helldivers' success, what could you like spin that on? I think SOCOM actually makes the most sense of all three games that I'm about to bring up, and it's mainly because of that strategy, multiplayer, shooting kind of... Now, the other two have that, and SOCOM has things beyond that as well, but I think, again, if you're just trying to chase Helldivers 2, SOCOM makes a lot of sense. And regardless, I would like to see SOCOM come back in some shape or form. I don't know if it like an only multiplayer kind of thing is, is the way I want it to come back, but again, I do want it to return. Okay, number two, my middle one, and one that I am very, very into, Killzone. We've talked about Killzone before. I, again, I'm using Helldivers 2 to try to spin it. Now, there's more to Killzone beyond the multiplayer, but Killzone, you know, does give off the vibe of like, this is PlayStation's first person shooter, right? As compared to the last game on this list, this game was actually the more successful of them. It had more entries in it. It lasted longer. And not even necessarily regarding Helldivers, right? But if Sony thinks, okay, do we want shooters? You know, you also think about Xbox. And you think about what they're going to do now with Activision Blizzard. You say, okay, well, how can we compete with Call of Duty? Now, can Killzone compete with Call of Duty? Not necessarily. But to have your own first-person shooter back. And this is what's so weird about Sony is they've had so many IPs and so many games in the past that when you bring up these things it's like oh yeah they already had that when you bring up like oh handheld consoles are very popular now they had the vita they had the psp when you bring up shooters they had resistance they had kill zone the list actually goes on when you think about fighting games you have nick all-stars brawl you have obviously smash right they had playstation all-stars battle royale they've kind of dipped their toes in everything and actually done quite well here and there i guess you're not like the vita technically i think was a massive failure but they've done it all kind of and i guess the point is just okay well if there's ever a time to bring some of these things back now might be the time Helldivers 2 has the success, again, of the third-person shooter. Now, first-person versus third-person, multiplayer. And, you know, again, I'm not necessarily saying all these games are Helldivers. In fact, they're not even close, right? Helldivers 2 is more of, like, the insanity. And just what they've been able to do is, in fact, it's actually you can't replicate it in these other games. But you can kind of do your own thing. And, again, it's this push to... Do you want more of those type of experiences? Because if you do, well, we do have a first-person shooter. It's a bit heavy, right? Like Killzone compared to like Resistance, which we'll talk about. But Killzone is a little bit of like a heavier thing. It's got the single-player element to it, but then it's also got the multiplayer part. And again, it actually was fairly popular. Now, Gorilla has moved on and, you know, done Horizon and whatnot. But Killzone, I think, is always something that's there if they want to, you know, go back in that well. And again, I think now is a good time, not just for for Helldivers again but if you look at Xbox and you say okay well you know we might need to start to have our own you know first person shooters all of a sudden well you actually had several of them right so that's number two 
And number one, my personal favorite, by a lot, there's a significant gap between Kill Zone and SOCOM. There's also a significant gap between Kill Zone and Resistance. Resistance is one of my favorite franchises of all time. I think they nailed it. Now, here's the thing. This one is absolutely the least likely. In fact, if I were to rank them, Killzone would be number one because of the popularity of the past, and it's also not been that that long, and it's a first-person shooter, and maybe you could spin it in their heads where it's like, hey, this helps you kind of solidify yourself outside of Call of Duty. You can do a lot of those things, right? Resistance, honestly, you can't do a lot of those things. This one's more about like a passion, you know, for me. Single player was always more important, I think, for Resistance than multiplayer. Now, the multiplayer, I think, was actually quite good. I played a lot of Resistance multiplayer back in the day, and it's really good. Now, again, it's it's got a different feel. I mentioned Killzone in terms of, like, the heaviness. Obviously, I mean, like, Chimera versus Hellgas. I mean, there's, there's different, obviously, elements, different studios and all that, but... For resistance, it was a lighter kind of thing, at least in my, you know, my memory of it. And the single player was much, much, you know, stronger and, and the the more of the forefront thing. Killzone, I think, did have very good stories. Um, but the multiplayer, again, I feel like Sony always wanted that to take off past what it even did, right? And really wanted to make that multiplayer special. Resistance was more of the single player stuff. So this one is tough. This one only makes sense because it is a, you know, first person shooter. It has multiplayer elements. It also has a single player thing i've been petitioning for this to come back forever we know the story actually well maybe you don't know the story but we have gone over the story in the past of it seems like resistance 4 was actually pitched by insomniac back in the day and the story at least has been reported is that sony turned it down because the alien you know kind of invasion and you know that kind of like vibe right that post actually post-apocalyptic right that was kind of the vibe that was too close to a little-known game called The Last of Us that was also being pitched by Naughty Dog at the same time. So they turned down Resistance 4 because the post-apocalyptic thing was too close to The Last of Us, which is also the same thing. Now, I mean, they're two completely different games, and I kind of believe that, but I mean, it doesn't have to be true. I mean, it's just a rumor. But we haven't seen it, obviously, since Resistance 3. We just got Retribution, the PSP game, you know, put on the classic. So it is technically still around. I hope there's still, you know, fans of it from, you know, like the literal fans. I also hope the developers, you know, some people in Insomniac, I hope still, you know, are there that worked on it. Um, I don't know. Could this one ever come back? Probably not. This one is honestly the least likely of the group considering, again, that single player focus. And, oh, actually, I never said this. It also didn't sell ever, period. It never sold. I mentioned Killzone in terms of success. Yes, it always felt like Sony wanted Killzone to be even bigger than it was, but Killzone ran laps from at least my knowledge of like sales, you know, what was going on. It ran laps around Resistance. So Resistance was never really a big seller. It was more single player focused. You know, Helldivers 2 is probably not going to teach Sony or PlayStation to go after single player stuff, right? That's not really the message there. So the only thing that really gets Resistance, you know, off the ground is the, the shooting element and multiplayer. But the multiplayer wasn't all that, you know, successful. So there you go. Hopefully something comes of it. Again, I'm not one for like, well, let's just make 50 of these games, right? That's probably not what you should do. But I'm also a big fan of these franchises. And I'll take any like any excuse to bring back resistance i don't care what it is i will take it so that was kind of the motivation i guess for me making this video let me know what you think in the comments make sure you're subscribed bell icon turned on and i hope to see you all on the next one